The biggest challenge that we're going to face in the coming century is the growing populations. And in geophysics, we can't help solve all of the problems that stem from that, but there are a few that we can. The geophysics department at Colorado School of Mines was um, a leader in creating the geophysics curriculum and education and research in the past century. And we're really trying to take a leadership role in understanding what that needs to look like in the 21st century. So in particular, energy, water, climate, and then the related system of food. These are things that we in geophysics can help, uh, help the world solve. We have done significant changes to our program in the past few years. Quite dramatic, actually, including into how we teach our students and what we teach them. It's a very exciting time to be at Mines with all these new developments. Also, it's a really awesome place to live. We're sitting here right at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. We can see geologic change right here outside of our door. I couldn't think of a better place to be. A lot of the work that we do involves being outside, collecting measurements at a site of interest with new and exciting instrumentation that perhaps people haven't been thinking about before. We've created what we call a cafetar geophysical laboratory, and we've buried geophysical targets in our commons. So we know exactly where they are, and we can test out uh, our new techniques uh, to see if we can actually image and see these buried targets. We are entering the era of big data in geophysics, quite powerful uh, um, change into how we conduct uh, our activities and how we uh, shape the educational programs, what we teach our students and why we teach them to do certain things. Some of these new deep learning mechanisms are allowing us to explore more subtle or weak or nuanced physics that we didn't see before. We cannot separate theoretical understanding from data acquisition and data processing. And we have to bring all of these together and we have acquisition that satisfies theoretical requirements and is exploited in real time to feed back into acquisition, to feed back into interpretation and create this virtual circle that gives us insight into the subsurface. In places where physics is a bit blurry, a bit fuzzy, machine learning comes in to help us to understand that part of the physics more. So it's a very uh, great advantage in that sense. We're imparting domain knowledge in our students along with the right computational skills in order to utilize these new algorithms for solving these problems. So one particularly cool technology we have to convey our geophysical findings is virtual reality. So we've been working to build a software base that allows us to integrate all of our geophysical data with other intuitive spatial references in one common rendering environment that we can immerse people in fully in virtual reality. These technologies, the growth in these technologies is really creating a renaissance in the geosciences and our students need to be prepared for that. At the graduate level, we're introducing two new degree programs. Uh, one is in humanitarian geophysics. One of the things that we're really excited about here is how we can use geophysics as an applied science in order to address some of these uh, very important questions of uh, community development challenges around the world. And so if we go out and deploy um, electromagnetic surveys or resistivity surveys or seismic surveys, we can collect a variety of different geophysical data types that can be integrated into a, a single interpretation that then allows us to identify potential new locations for, uh, for groundwater. And one of the really um, challenging parts of doing humanitarian geophysics is largely access to geophysical instrumentation. So we have a couple projects that are going on looking to develop resistivity meters, low-cost seismometers that can actually be employed in groundwater investigations to really lower the barrier to entry and allow a much wider scale application of this technology throughout the developing world. We're also putting a lot of emphasis on hydrology and hydrogeophysics and we have a new program in hydrogeophysics that we're, uh, that we're just launching. One of the things that's really changing the way we think about hydrogeologic processes is airborne measurements, which have been around in mining for ages, but not so much in hydro. And so we can now fly and see down hundreds of meters into the earth, and that gives us a way to take a look at what the bottom boundary might look like for some of the numerical models we make. We're training people that really are at those interfaces that understand hydrogeologic and hydrologic problems, but then know how to solve those problems. So for me as a, as a teacher, it's really exciting to be part of a program that really integrates those two things together. 
Geophysics at the Colorado School of Mines is adapting to the way in which the world functions today. Geophysics at the Colorado School of Mines is preparing to change the world.